Hey folks, my name is Adam and I'm here with Pig Out Roasters and today I'm really excited to showcase our alternate charcoal rotisserie for you. And the plan is today we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing so we're going to show you exactly what's going to show up uh, when your roast or rotisserie finally gets delivered. Um, but yeah, we're also going to show you how to set it up as well. And that said, we're going to have you outdoors roasting with your friends and family, out in the great outdoors, just like the picture behind me in no time. Alright, so to start things off, uh, what you can expect to receive when your Ultimate Charcoal Rotisserie arrives is two main boxes. So you're going to have your actual rotisserie inside this main uh, large one, and then the secondary box is going to contain your spit hole as well. Now you do also have the option to get some different accessories to make things a little bit more functional. So we do have our uh, charcoal firebox with a wind guard, so it helps to block the wind and redirect the heat to your roast. We also have a tabletop carving system, so we have a tabletop carving stand with a handled meat tray. And then of course we do also have a rotisserie basket set, so you can actually set up four baskets with chickens, uh, different roasts, you name it, and get it cooking over that fire. But today, to start things off, let's check out what's inside the boxes of your ultimate charcoal rotisserie. Alright, so within your box you're going to find one set of instructions for your ultimate charcoal rotisserie. But that said, if you're watching this video, you might not need it that off to the side. We just have an important card here just to say uh, some first use instructions, just some cleaning instructions. It is a, uh, a food, you know, safety thing. So just make sure you give your, your clamps a wash, things like that before you put your meat onto it. Now getting into the more exciting things here, we'll fold some of this packing away. Starting on my side over here, we've got your motor mount. So this is going to actually cover the actual motor for the, your uh, rotisserie. Now it does have a shield on it, so you're going to want to basically peel this away before you actually expose it to any heat. We have the motor for the spit rotisserie itself. This thing has about 160 pound capacity, so as long as you go underneath that weight, you can pretty much cook whatever you can fit on the pole. Within this packaging here, we have the actual drive socket which I will show you eventually how to actually set this up onto your spit hole itself. So this is what the drive socket looks like. Also within your box, you're gonna find two sets of tripod legs. This is gonna be one for uh, the front of your rotisserie, then one that holds the, uh, the motor mount on itself. So I'm just gonna put these out in front. This is your second set of tripod legs. You're going to find your motor mount itself. So you have a plate on top where your motor is going to sit and we're going to fasten it in, in here and then that motor cover goes on top. This section here slides directly into your tripod legs. Then we have the female end of the uh, receiver for the pole itself. So we will go over this when we do the setup as well. But this also slots inside of one of the sets of tripod legs. Over on this side here, you're going to find the different clamps for your rotisserie. So each Ultimate Charcoal Rotisserie will come with basically two sets of spine brackets as well as two uh, four prong clamps, one for the head and one for the rear of uh, your pig or your lamb or whatever it is that you're roasting. You're also going to find a red handled tool. What it is is essentially a 3 16th Allen key but it's on a nice, has a nice handle, it's extended so it's a little bit easier to get uh, inside of your roast and to make sure everything's nice and tight. So you'll find one of these inside your, uh, your box as well. And then finally, to top things off, we have a box here, and what's inside of it is just one of our logoed uh, Pig Out Roasters mugs. So just so you can sit back and uh, either have a coffee or you know maybe a little bit uh, you know something a little bit stronger than that while your your roast is cooking, and yeah, you can just enjoy the, enjoy the day. So without further ado, now that we've gone through everything inside the box, why don't we take a closer look and actually start assembling it together? All right, so just as promised, we've got everything laid out here and we're pretty much ready to assemble. But before we jump into that, let's just do a double check on what we have on the table here. We have our two sets of tripod legs. We have your one uh, bracket that's gonna basically hold the pole on the, the male end of it, four prongs and then two spine brackets and your red handled tool. You have your motor plate, uh, you have your motor itself, the drive socket, and then of course the motor cover on top of that. I just wanna show you the tools that you're gonna need to actually do your final assembly. And it's going to be very easy. So if you look over here, we just have a regular Phillips screwdriver. So that's the star head for people who don't know the names. Um, and then you're going to want basically a 7 16th spanner, which is also the same as an 11 millimeter one. You're actually going to want two of these. 
And then you're also gonna need just an Allen key and it's gonna be the three millimeter one. So we'll pull that guy out here. Just another Allen key here. Okay, so to start things off, we're just gonna set up our two sets of tripod legs. So I'm sure you can kind of put things together here, but they basically just fold out. They're gonna set up like that. So nice and sturdy. And then we're gonna take this one end plate here this one, uh, it's going to slot inside of the bracket itself. We're going to slide it right in. Now, one thing that you're going to notice as I put this in is there are, there are these holes here. Now, what these are are sockets for your, your pin here. So basically what that does is you can remove this and adjust the height of your, uh, of your spit. So basically you can have it closer to the, the, the heat source, whether it's fire or charcoal, or you can bring it up above if you want it to be more of like an indirect cook. But yeah, so that makes it a little bit easier to work with and make sure that you're cooking at the proper temperature. On the other side here, we're going to do the exact same thing. Set up our tripod legs. They're just going to slot out. You're going to take your, your motor plate here. You're going to want the long end here, basically sticking out and away from the heat or the, the center. Because this is going to be where your motor actually sits and you want it away from the heat source. So this is the first step and we're pretty much third or even a half of the way there already. So it's super easy to do. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the motor assembly. This is the part that's probably gonna take the longest to do, but it's not very hard, it's actually quite easy. Uh, so at the end of the day, what we're gonna do is essentially set it up so your motor is sitting on top of the plate here. But one thing that you will notice is that your rotisserie on the motor plate, it's actually gonna come with the hardware already in place here. So all we need to do is unscrew these bolts Take them all out and then we'll be able to basically uh, mount in the motor. So I've gone ahead and removed all of the hardware from the motor plate itself. So now what I'm going to do is just take the motor, line it up into these inserts here, and one by one I'm going to go and basically insert and tighten up the nuts and these are what we're going to need the spanners for. Now to start things off it is going to be a little bit tight. So you might have to kind of work your fingers in there, but just take your time, do one at a time, and you should be good to go. All right, so we've got our motor uh, fastened onto the motor plate itself. So the next step of what we're gonna wanna do is attach the drive shaft to it, or the motor socket, I should say. So one thing you'll find is that you're gonna have a piece of tape going around the shaft itself and underneath this tape is actually a woodruff key. It's basically a key that looks like a half moon that slots into this shaft. Make sure you don't lose that because that's gonna help fasten your socket directly to the shaft itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and tape this right now. So just so you guys see it, I'm just gonna pull out the woodruff key here. So as mentioned before, it just slots into a little space here and it's a little piece that looks like a half moon. Now, this is very important. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't use that. All right, so now to drive or attach the drive socket. One thing that's probably gonna be a good idea to do is just to make sure that you take your Allen key here and loosen off some of these set screws. There's one on each side and they just help to clamp this down to your drive shaft. So what I'm gonna do is just loosen these up a little bit first. All right, so we've loosened up the set screws on your drive socket. So now we're gonna actually attach it to the drive shaft so one thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is line up this section with that set screw or with that uh, woodruff screw that I mentioned before because it's gonna slot over top of it. So now that we've actually got the socket onto the drive shaft, we're just gonna go back and tighten up those set screws with your Allen key. Okay, so we've got your drive socket attached to the, uh, the motor itself. So the next step, what we're gonna do is attach the motor cover. But the first thing we wanna do before that is just loosen off all of these screws, loosen them completely and just take them out. All right, so we've got all the screws out. Now you're gonna take your motor cover, just slide it in over top, just like that. You're gonna wanna put that in place. Make sure that your, your drive shaft is actually sticking out of this socket piece here. And now what we're gonna do is just line up the slots again with the screws and then tighten your screws back up. 
All right, so there you go, you've done it. Uh, you've pretty much set up everything to do with your ultimate charcoal rotisserie. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is just remove this protective film here. Uh, it just helped cover up the, the stainless steel during the manufacturing manufacturing process. But just to show you guys what it looks like when you actually have your spit pole set up, I'm just gonna get that set up for you now. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when you actually put your spit pole into place. So one thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have enough distance here set up over your fire or the charcoal bed that you can basically just slot this insert section here, this female end into this male end here. So it's gonna pop in underneath. But you're also gonna want the male end of your, your pole, it's this hex, hex end here, to slot into your drive shaft. So I'm just gonna insert that here, slot in down at the other end. Now your pole's all set up. The last thing to do that I'm gonna show you is just have to properly set up your, your clamps so that you're ready to hit the ground running and start roasting in the summer. So as mentioned earlier, your uh, ultimate charcoal rotisserie is gonna come with four clamps. You have your two four prongs here, as well as two spine brackets. Now the way that these all loosen up and actually attach to your pole is you have these uh, set screws here and then you're gonna use your red handle tool. You're gonna loosen these up. So once you've got that loosened up, you're basically just gonna slide it onto your spit pole like so and they're gonna tighten up the same way that you loosen them. So I've got one of the four prongs on. Next up, we're gonna do the two spine brackets that are gonna sit along your pole like this. And then finally, the last four prong facing in. So here you have a visual reference of how your uh, clamps are actually going to work with your pole. You can imagine having your pig set up here or your lamb or you could do turkeys, you name it. If you can get it on that pole, you can pretty much cook it. But basically the way I've got these clamps set up here is the exact same way that it's set up in the image behind me here. So you've got your two four prong clamps here as well as the two spine brackets running through. Now that said, we do have plenty of other great videos uh, up on YouTube or on our social media, so make sure you check one of those out because we do have some videos that are dedicated to actually putting a pig on the pole or other forms of cooking, you name it. Uh, we'll make sure to include a link to them uh, down below for you.